Well, I can't tell you how long it's been since I've been up here. I mean, it's been uh, probably since we filmed that show up here with uh, Captain Travis Tanner. They just opened this up in December. So everybody's just now getting the first look on this, uh, on this east side, uh, east of the channel. They've opened it to badge personnel that work at the Cape. That's right. They've, anybody that comes out here has to be with a Cape badge person and get a fishing pass. But since they've just opened it in, de in December, we're still kind of fishing green fish. And what he means by green fish is that these fish haven't seen lures. They haven't seen anything artificial thrown at them for a few years now, since 9-11. So it should be a good day on the Space Coast. They haven't seen lures or boats. Boats is the main thing that everything's been sort of shut down out here since 9-11. So it gives everybody an opportunity to see really green fish. Actually, kind of see what uh, conservation is all about too, because I mean, this, this area up here is so pristine. Whew. Look at that. Look at that. Unreal. Ooh. Wow. Okay, now they might be starting to turn on to eat, you think? That's a happy fish. That's a real happy fish. Give me another push. There we go, here we go. He, he, he ate it. He he's ate thinking it. it. He's eating it. Tailing up on it. He's definitely look, he definitely looked at He's got it. There, go. there he is. There Fish on, brother. <laughs> there you go. Golly. You know, that's about a long time. Oh, we pulled off. Dang. <laughs> First hit of the morning. He just pulled off. There's another one coming up there behind us. Welcome to this episode of Addictive Fishing. On today's episode, we're fishing literally basically on the Space Coast. I got my old friend, Rich Morrell, from old high school days. We're always trying to figure out how we can fish together. And, haven't seen each other in probably two years, and we live 25 miles apart. And uh, we've been trying to figure out how to fish together. I told him the other day, I said, listen, I gotta go do shows, man. I can't, I can't go out and fish. He says, well, hey, they just opened up the no motor zone to badge personnel on the Cape. Why don't you come up, we'll get a fishing day in. So today we're fishing up in the no motor zone. Rich Morrell. Y'all stay tuned, we'll be right back with some more addictive fishing. other end. Man, what are they doing? You need to cast in front of him. Yeah, he's, had, he's heading south, looks like. See if we can pull one with a piece of plastic made by the other. I'll try to catch the first one first. That way we don't spook the one in the back. We can get two fish out of it. I'm gonna squat now. Good night. He's up out of the water. Occupied with eating whatever they're eating right now. Oh, I'm just watching my line, waiting to see it jump. If he eats it, you'll see that line just. up there, Richard. More accurate. Add 40 yards than 60. <laughs> milling around up in there. I keep trying to feed them with their tails. There's one. There he goes. He's on it. There you go. There you go. There's a fish. It's about time. There's a fish. <laughs> After we're both sitting here sweating. <laughs> it's amazing how much a five pound fish can just make you shake like crazy. <laughs> well, what's neat is you know, as soon as he saw the oh. bait, he was going to take it. It's just a matter of 
getting it right in front of him. He was so preoccupied with eating. Whatever he was grubbing on. Look at the size of the spots on this guy. Well, I hope y'all saw this whole scenario right there. We come around the corner, had their tails up. They're eating around on these little grass in here. Just a perfect scenario of a tail and redfish. Just kind of reeled it up to his head. Actually, I was kind of reeling to his tail and dropped it right, right next to him and he sniffed it out. Come here, dude. And did he eat it? I'll tell you what, that laser sharp's right in the corner of the mouth, though. Come here, dude. Come on. It's a pretty little fish. Yes, sir. A good way to start the morning. He ain't the biggest one in the world, but what'd you say? <laughs> We've seen some today that could eat this guy. Oh, yeah, easily. It's a pretty red fish. That is a beauty. Still full of life. I'll tell you what, it's cold water, and that water is chilly. No wonder they're getting a little lethargic. Yeah, you really got to slow everything down for him right now because of the, the temperature of the water. Even as shallow it is, it, as it is, it's still real cold. Well, I tell you, I could sure take another one of those. He got my shrimp. Mm. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back. Can't get my balance in these news yet. Yeah, reeling across the top of the water, sometimes you there'll there be is, another redfish right now. Oh, yeah. There'll be another redfish right next to him or something. Oh yeah, here we go. You're on the right side of me. For once. <laughs> you know what, he's looking directly west. I can see him, he's looking directly west. The black drum or red? I don't know, but if you if, if you cast, you need to cast almost over the he's top of his tail. He's in that grass. You cast over the top of his tail. There you go, there you go, there you go. Right there, right there, right there. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Oh, oh. He's going to it. Tail on it. Oh my gosh. I think he just ate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good fish. That is a good That's fish. That's the time we've been looking for. <laughs> yeah, another one right next to him too. Heck yeah. The cooperative ones. <laughs> Even that one, though, you know, the, fish, the shrimp was right in front of him, and he still took a little while. For how long? Nice redfish, though, dude. That's yes, a good redfish. This is probably my biggest one now that no motor zone up here. That's a good fish. There's that music we love to hear. I think you just realized you might have been hooked. <laughs> Tell you what, Captain Carl, your rod is performing well, brother. Captain Carl's a member of our forum. We got a forum on, on our website that everybody goes and talks and trades out fishing secrets and whatnot. For you guys out there that don't know about the forum, go to the forum, check it out. It's addictedfishing.com. We've got a button right there on the website. It says forum. We'll talk about fishing all you want. Rich, you said it's been what, since before 9-11 since you've been up here? Absolutely. Has it gotten better or worse since then? Uh, you know, they're just a little cold, but man, there's fish everywhere. It's amazing. There's reds and drum together. There's trout. Everything's up here. It's just a little cold. Well, Mother Nature has finally cooperated with us. I mean, if you saw the scenario, we're fishing the big fish the same as the small fish. But Richard, this is definitely a grown one. Yeah, this is a big one. Remember what I call him, don't you? Mogan. <laughs> Mogan Red. See, I don't have to say it all the time on the show. <laughs> I don't say it near as much as I used to. At least last year I didn't. We didn't get that many big fish last year. It was a tough fish and it gets What's tough. neat is when you're up here, you know, there's there's multiple fish together tailing, so you could have double ups all the time. If you if you had two guys fishing, it would be real easy to come up here and say one, two, three, go, and then each person throw out and, and double up. We'll get a rod in his hand soon enough. You get, <laughs> you get my drift? <laughs> I think Richard wants to fish. Is there any other place like this that is this much square area of no motor zone that you that you know of? There is a ton of no motor zones around. That's one thing I kind of wanted to touch on today too is the conservation that these no motor zones basically supply to your area. Is you got these big broodstock redfish like this, and they'll just they breed and they restock the area basically with the reds. This guy's just having his way with us right now, ain't he? <laughs> Beat me up. You think that's a full-grown one? Heck yeah, it's full grown. <laughs> if you look at the size of the head on this one, like I said that up here a few years ago when I had a black drum big on, oh, big on the boat. Come here, dude. God, they can, 
They get docile when they're ready to give up, don't they? Nice fish, mm. nice fish. I say docile. <sighs> nice fish. That is a beauty, ain't it? Head like a mailbox. <laughs> Head like my pit bull. Ow. Good old laser sharp did the job again. Oh, mama! Now that is a redfish. And that's the way you kiss one, too. <laughs> well, thank you, Richard. Oh, yeah. Well, you want to you touch this one since you were a major part of it? <laughs> that's a nice. Well, get you some tail. Pretty fish. <laughs> pretty fish. Look at the size of that tail. Ah, oh, nice one. Look how thick that fish is. That's a big fish. It really is. It's pretty. You know, a lot of times people go back and forth like this when they're reviving a fish. But when you got big fish like this, if you kind of go, I'm saying this to the viewers out there, I know you know. But if you go back and forth with them like this, that lactic acid builds up in these big redfish. And you want to make sure that they're going to swim away good. Kind of like that. There you go. Try not to rub. Try not to rub him too much, but make sure you get that all that lactic acid out of their tails or out of their meat there before you let them go, because a lot of times they'll flip right over on their back and they'll end up dying that way. So you just want to make sure they swim off good. Richard, <laughs> that was a heck of a That fish, was a lot brother. of fun. I think I'd go for another one of those. Heck yeah. Finally starting to get warm. I think I'm gonna put my shorts on. Y'all stay tuned, we'll be right back with some more addictive fishing. That big old tail deserves a big old shrimp. Well, you know, Rich, I didn't just bring you out here to uh, pull me around on these redfish. Richard knows a lot more than I do about the history of Cocoa Beach and uh, basically the history of Florida in this area right here on the Space Coast in general. I mean, you did mass amounts of studies to like the Indians, where they used to migrate oh, back yeah. and forth around here. Oh, yeah. Well, when I, when I get hooked up with this next fish right here, I want you to tell people a little bit about that because I always found that interesting. I can do that. Look at that, that's a monster there. A monster there, a monster there. Yeah, we're in we're in less than two feet of water. We're in we're in monster territory. Right, you're just about in the zone here. Oh, get me on up to him. I'm gonna watch this one eat. Just went down. Tail went down. Might be the one so to the calm, left. It's so calm out here. I don't want to scream at these fish. Just spook them all. Hey, there he is. There he is. Right there. Right there. Perfect. Keep following. Him. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Turned him. He's you on. Turned him. You turned him. <laughs> <laughs> you turned that fish. Was that a good setup or what? Five minutes after we lost the one, we're back on fish. Well, look at that, the wake. That goes to show you what a no motor zone can do about conservation and whatnot. Now, I'm going to be pounding that in about conservation and whatnot today, but if you take care of the estuary, the estuary will let you have a good day like this. Oh, he's gonna go hang out with, the, with those other black drum on the bank over there. That's that music, baby. Okay, Richard, tell me about the migration or what the or what was the actual name of the Indians that used to live in this area here? Well, there there's actually several several different uh, local tribes. The whole state was uh, had three different groups way way back in the day. Um, I, what I think is neat about the whole thing is. Uh, there was a local group that actually spent half a year on the St. John's and the other half up there by Turtle Mound at the very north end of the lagoon. Well, you can actually go up around Turtle Mound, and there's still some of those giant oyster mounds up there where they used to pop those oysters, and they're just a great big giant mounds up there. Absolutely. I remember going up to Eddy Creek, too, and anybody can go up and launch out of Eddy Creek up in Mosquito Lagoon, and there's some placards up there that I know that show, I remember, I forgot the guy that used Bartram. to. Bartram. Bartram? Yep. Came up here as an explorer and he spent five months up here or something going all around the estuary up here and there used to be black bear and all panthers up here, all sorts of stuff. Yep, and there's still tails right, right out in front of us. There's still more tails. <laughs> Ain't that a bad thing, huh? That's a big fish. That one's the king daddy. Look at that laser sharp right in the corner of the mouth too. I think I can get this guy up. I think he's done, Richard. Oh, wow. Look at that thing. Another another massive head redfish. Lobe tails as we call them here in the Space Coast. Ah, nice fish. How's that for a redfish? Whew. Travis Holman, brother. That one's for you. 
Beautiful. That is a nice one. You said there's about six or more pails up there still? Yeah, there's, there's, they're just they're, they're all over the place right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. Good is. deal. He's still in real good shape, too. Oh, yeah. And if you have a friend like Richard Morrell here that happens to work out here on the Space Center, you know, make sure you bug him to death to say, hey, take me out there in that no motor zone. I saw Blair catching all them fish yet. Because it's a lot of fun, I can tell you that. You want to catch one? Sure, hook me up. Well, I'm going to jump on the back, put my pal Richard on a fish. Well, we're going to show you what we were using out there today, the bait check of the day, eight pound test power pro. Six and a half foot uh, medium action rod. Captain Carl, you built me a great rod that was whooping them redfish today. Uh, we we're using a four rot laser sharp eagle claw circle hook. 20 pound test, fluorocarbon leader, and I always say use fluorocarbon even if it brings you one more bite during the day, it has done its job. Merle Chandler canoe man knot, a uni to uni to that eight pound power pro and it was getting the job done. And we were taking the shrimp and hooking them right in the tail put it out in front, and it's so cold today that the fish were just so lethargic sitting there, you just kind of wanted to drag it away from them instead of like hopping it off to get their attention with it. You had to be real close and precise with the cast and just barely move it to get their attention, then they would eat it up. Once they started eating those live shrimp, we switched it up to the plastics, hooking them the same way, same rig that you do with a live bait, toss it out in front of them, and just kind of like drag it away a little bit. Every time, man, it was bam, fish on. And that was some of the most exciting red fishing I have done on Florida Space Coast. So there's your bait check for today. You can come to Space Coast, use you some shrimp, live shrimp, circle hooks, catch you some redfish. No, wait, no, I see one. We can't, see him? I can't see him. Right here. I can't see him. I got a bad glare. Go ahead. Oh, I see him now. See him? Yeah. I've been waiting to see you catch a fish for two years. He's on. I think he's on. <laughs> Richard finally figured out what a, a laser sharp circle hook could do. I saw him over there tip up just for a second and then he was in a sandy spot so I could see him. He's not real big. Not a big one, bro. But Mother Nature changing conditions on us. Just gotta get in some calm water. Yep, yeah, they're, they're just moving so slow in this winter time. I'm gonna get down off here before I fall in. But Richard, he ain't that little. Yeah, I mean, if, we, if we didn't catch a single fish today, you know what? He'd be a mogan. <laughs> He's bait for those other fish you caught earlier. Let's see that dude. Well, he is a nice one though, Richard. No matter what, when Mother Nature changes the conditions on you and you can come up in what, three inches of water and catch a redfish? Yep. That's good. Good I'm stuff. Gonna let, I'm gonna let this dude get on out of here. Oh, yeah, he's gonna sit there, ah, and off he goes. He'll be a mug in one day. <laughs> Richard, thank you very much for letting me come up here to the old stomping grounds. Absolutely. The No Motor Zone, north part of the Banana River. Uh, we're on the east bank today, and uh, I wanna say thank you very much to Lieutenant Colonel Strokes for letting us come on the east side with the cameras today to show you all these beautiful redfish Absolutely. that the Space Coast has to offer. Yeah, L Lieutenant Colonel Strokes, as well as the 45th Space Wing Public Affairs Office helped us put this together with the cameras. And uh, just keep in mind that anything east of the channel, east of the main channel, you need to have a Cape Badge person with you. Anything west of the channel, you can come up either from Cars Park or the causeway there. And it's, it's all good, east and west, it's all good stuff. It's all good fishing on the Space Coast. Absolutely. I want to say thanks to Custom Gear News too. They provided the boat for us today to get in this real, real skinny water with no motor on the back of it. So, until next week, don't forget about the website, addictivefishing.com. Adios, enjoy the tunes.